This video is sponsored by Squarespace. At first glance, Avi Metal and Grimdark couldn't look more different. With Grimdark being the easy fan favorite, while Avi Metal is notoriously difficult. But what if I told you they are actually the same thing? Not only that, I also bet that I can do 90% of the work using one simple technique. Of course, I have never actually tried to paint Avi Metal or Grimdark, so. This is actually all just in theory. A quick recap. Grim Dark and Heavy Metal are the two most popular painting styles for Warhammer miniatures. You'll recognize Heavy Metal as the techniques used on the GW box, identifiable by its clean, bright style, minimal contrast, and so, so many edge highlights. Grim Dark is the opposite of this. A fan favorite, the style was inspired by the lore itself and can be summed up with the infamous line, in the grim darkness of the far future, there is only war. This style is identifiable through its use of desaturated colors, weathering effects like rust and mud, and in general seeks to capture the essence of 40k. So how are these the same thing? The answer comes down to a single technique, dry brushing using a domed brush. A domed brush is a densely packed brush with shorter bristles, usually circular in shape. The domed brush allows for a gentler touch, giving a smoother, more subtle application of paint. I propose that this technique can be used on both styles and you can get great results easier and faster. Step one is basing the miniatures in black through my airbrush. Dry brushing highlights the raised edges. Basing in black assures that those hard to reach places will be in shadow. The key to this technique is removing the majority of your paint from your brush. Consider removing the majority of the paint like the thinning process. Instead of adding water to the paint to reduce the opacity, we are removing paint from the brush itself to reduce our opacity. I would aim for removing approximately 75% of the paint that was originally on your brush. For both miniatures, I'm starting with a dark red. For the heavy metal style, I'm adding a bit of white to all of my colors to increase the opacity and decrease the saturation. The plan is to build up a bit of a zenithal with my dry brush and then add in the saturation later with contrast paints. Painting vibrant colors over white gives them a great base to show off their true pigments. All right, I'm loading my brush, removing the majority of my paint, focusing on the heel and belly of the brush, then drawing it across my miniature, mostly in downward strokes. The harder you press, the more paint that will be left on your model and the deeper into the recesses your paint will hit. For this first layer, we will want to press quite hard. Each additional layer will receive less pressure as well as hit on the areas further up on the model to create those highlights from our light source. Oh crap. What if you mess up and apply too much paint? Take your finger or a paper towel and quickly try to dab away the paint. If need be, you might have to re-dry brush that whole area, or you might be able to mix a paint very similar and then dry brush over your wayward paint strokes. While it's easy to misstep in miniature painting, Squarespace can provide you with everything you need to create an online presence or online business. Create custom high quality galleries to show off your work in any size, create one of a kind items to sell on your website, or sell products without lifting a finger with Squarespace's put on demand features. No matter your dreams, Squarespace has the online tools to help you get there. To make your custom website, check out squarespace.com to start your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, head to squarespace.com slash lilamev and use the code lilamev to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. All right, back to painting. Of course, be sure that you are allowing each layer of paint to dry before you're moving on to your next color. Though I'm mostly using downward strokes on round areas like the pauldrons, I'm applying strokes in multiple directions. This is to hide the pattern of downward brush strokes that are more easily seen on larger areas. On the areas that I am brushing upwards or side to side, I am using an even lighter hand so that I can create a more subtle gradation. As I move lighter in my gradation, I'm using a softer touch and focusing my brush strokes on the areas that would be hit by the light. These areas include the tops of the pauldrons, the upward facing sides of the arms and legs, helmet, and the top of the chest.
Then the Grim Dark Marine just requires a little bit of extra dry brushing with my Pure Red. My Heavy Metal Marine is being a far bigger pain in the butt. Though my highlights are building up nicely as long as I'm using the tip of the brush, it is turning a bit chalky. I think I can still make this work, but it probably would have been easier to attempt this challenge using colors like blue or green instead of red, since I have to build up such a light base coat to make the red really pop. With our base gradations applied, this is where the two styles part ways. For our Evy Metal Marine, where smooth gradations are paramount, I'm going in and glazing in any rough patches on the armor. If you took your time and did your progress slowly, this should be very easy and require minimum blending. If you messed up and have ended up with a bit of a patchy application, I recommend mixing up a color as close to the color you are trying to blend as possible. Some colors begin to break down when thinned, so mixing to match your colors will make glazing easier. Glaze is applied, it's time for contrast paints. I couldn't find the perfect shade of red, so I'm making my own using red from Pro Acryl and the Citadel Contrast Medium. Using an old brush, I'm applying my contrast paint evenly across my model. You don't want the paint to pull in the recesses, so I'm dabbing the brush on a paper towel to drain the moisture from the brush and sucking away any pooling paint. This paint does dry quickly, so work in sections and move with intent. Apply multiple layers as needed to achieve that intense, saturated color. For my Grimdark model, I'm stippling on the same pure red paint I had dry brushed on previously. In some spots, I'm waiting a moment and then dabbing the paint away with my finger to reduce the intensity. Applying more layers of translucent paint on top of each other is one way to achieve vibrancy and opacity, but depending on the level of opacity in your paint, this can be pretty slow. Remember to place these intense areas of color at the high points where light would hit. The rest of this will pretty much be the same on both models. Lining the recesses with black, then edge highlighting determined by my paint style. The Evan Metal Marine is going to get edge highlighting on nearly every edge, while I'm being far more sparing with my edge highlights on the Grim Dark model, only edge highlighting a select few locations. On the Grim Dark model, I'm going over my white edge highlight with pure red. I don't want this edge highlight to be really obvious, so this will add a nice pop of red without really looking like lining. On the Evy Metal Marine, I'm doing a vibrant red-orange, following the formula I have seen on Evy Metal Blood Angel models. Finally, we are on to the most important step in the process for our Grimdark miniature, weathering and grime. I'm applying my Vallejo Environmental Streak and Grime with an old brush, allowing it to dry for a moment, then wiping it away with a cotton bud on the areas that I want to be the most vibrant. To help sell the Grimdark environment, I'm adding mud to the base as well as on his feet. Then I'm going over the base and bottom half of the model with pigments from Green Stuff Weld. Lastly is a quick varnish, and we're done. Was I successful in my goals? Yes and no. Can you do both styles with dry brushing? Yes. Should you? That depends. If you have an airbrush, then no. If you don't, then this is a good alternative. The Evy Metal style still required some glazing, but definitely not a lot. If you were doing a color other than red, or were okay with a more desaturated red, then this would be everything you need. You know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe. Go join me over on Patreon. Thanks so much. See you next time.